Today I'm going to teach you guys how to solve basic trig equations. So this will be kind of an introduction. So solving a trig equation is pretty much a two-step process. The first step is to get the trig part of the equation, like in this case cosine x, by itself using your normal algebra skills. So for example, right now I'm just going to add one to both sides and then divide by two. I'm going to do that in one step. So that would give me cosine x is equal to one half. The second part is to figure out what the reference angle is and figure out what quadrants we're dealing with. So using the chart that you guys have memorized, and if you have not memorized this chart or if you've forgotten this chart, definitely pause the video study this chart and memorize it right now. For the rest of this video, I'm going to assume that you have the chart memorized, or if you're in the room with me, like it's behind me. Okay, so using that chart, you should be able to tell me what the reference angle is. So, um, people in the room with me, so I just won't call you by name, but anybody who feels bold enough, um, cosine of what angle is equal to one half, just blurt it out. That's pi over 3, okay? The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. That's not the final answer. That's the reference angle. We have to combine that with the quadrant. So pay attention to the fact that um, in this case, cosine is positive 1 half. So I'm just going to write that down. Cosine x is positive. So in what two quadrants will cosine be positive? Just blurt out in quadrants one and what? Four. One and four. These are the two quadrants where cosine is positive because cosine is an x value. x values are positive to the right. When it comes time to name these, um, because the reference angle is pi over three, I like to say to myself, over here on the left, pi can be thought of as three pi over three. Two pi can be thought of as six pi over 3. With that in mind, then x will equal. So in the first quadrant, the reference angle is the answer. So x is either equal to pi over 3 itself, or um, what's the name of the angle in the fourth quadrant that has this reference angle of pi over 3? What do we call it in the fourth quadrant? That's going to be 5 pi over 3. Okay, because that's just one short of 6 pi over 3, so therefore 5 pi over 3. So that's how you do it. Those are the two solutions to this equation. By the way, let me emphasize the fact that we are being asked to find all solutions on the interval between 0 and 2 pi. That means one spin around the uh, unit circle. So you need to list off any solutions that you can possibly find between 0 and 2 pi, all of them need to be listed out. So here's another one. The first step is to get the tangent squared by itself. So I'm going to do that by simply adding 1 to both sides. So I have tangent squared is equal to 1. How do I make the squared aspect of it go away? What do I do? Got to take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root of both sides, I'm going to make a small mistake right now. Can you tell me what I just did wrong? Tangent x equals 1. What's wrong with that? It needs a plus or minus 1. This is going to be very important. This is going to come up a lot. When you take the square root of both sides, the solution will be plus or minus. If you leave that off, you're literally losing half of the solutions that you're supposed to have. So that one tiny mistake will cost you half credit. Um, so we have this. Now, reference angle. Based on this, remember the chart. So um, shout out if you can't. What is the reference angle? Ignore the plus or minus. Tangent of what is 1? That's pi over 4. So that tells me that the reference angle is pi over 4. Notice that we have a tangent x that is positive or negative. That means we can be in any quadrant. So when I draw my little circle, 
since tangent can be plus or minus, that means it can be in four places. In any quadrant will give us a solution. So we're going to have four solutions this time instead of like the two we had last time. Because of the plus or minus, we have four solutions. Uh, just as a quick reminder, with a reference angle of pi over 4, I will think of pi as 4 pi over 4, and I will think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. So that means in the first quadrant, x is the reference angle itself of pi over 4. Um, what about in the second quadrant? What am I going to say in this, from the second quadrant? 3 pi over 4. What about in the third quadrant? 5 pi over 4. And then what about in the fourth quadrant? 7 pi over 4. So there are your four solutions. I want you to avoid a common mistake that I see on this next problem. You notice that we have a cotangent on the left and a cotangent on the right. So how tempting would it be to uh, divide both sides by cotangent? Like it seems like the most natural thing in the world. You cannot do this. Never divide both sides by a trig function. Um, cotangent is zero sometimes. So if you go dividing by cotangent, you're indirectly dividing by zero, and you're losing solutions that you're supposed to have. So the question is, if I'm not allowed to divide both sides by cotangent, what do I do? The key is going to be get zero on one side and then factor. So I am going to subtract this 2 cotangent x from both sides of the equation. So that's going to give me cotangent x cosine squared x minus 2 cotangent x is equal to 0. So instead of dividing both sides of the equation by cotangent, at this point, I want you to take the common factor of cotangent x and factor that outside of parentheses. It's a common factor. Think GCF. So take that cotangent and pull it out to the front like this. Cotangent x parentheses. Now, if anybody is brave enough, can you tell me, just blurt out, what is left behind on the inside of the parentheses? Well, the cotangent got pulled away. So minus 2. So now we have this. So factoring out the cotangent is what you do instead of dividing both sides by cotangent. So now we're going to use the zero product property. We have these two factors multiplied together and set equal to zero. That means we can get solutions by setting either factor equal to zero. So we're going to split this up into two smaller equations. So we will have cotangent x is equal to zero or um, cosine squared x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we're basically going to solve all of these, uh, each of these separately. Um, let's start by solving the, uh, the cotangent x equals 0 part of the equation. So uh, I'm going to put this sort of off to the side here. If I have cotangent x is equal to 0. How can I rewrite cotangent in terms of sine and cosine? What would that be? Cosine over sine. So I'm hoping you've all memorized this. So if I were you, I would think of this as uh, cosine x over sine x. Um, that's what has to equal 0. Now here's something I need you to get comfortable with. Oh god. Oh god. Can I make this go away? Um, when you have a fraction equal to 0, that's only going to happen if the numerator is equal to, to 0. The denominator can't be 0. That would be undefined. So anytime you have a fraction set equal to 0, that means that the numerator must equal 0. So basically, if cotangent x is equal to 0, that tells me that cosine has to equal 0. So the question is, where on the unit circle does that happen? All right, help me out. 
um, where on the unit circle will cosine equal zero? Pi over two and three pi over two, because cosine is an x value, and x values are zero right here on that y-axis. So those are the two spots. That's why those are the two solutions for this cotangent x. So we get x is equal to pi over two or three pi over two. So those are, are the solutions that come from cotangent x equals zero. Now let's turn our attention to cosine squared minus two equals zero and um, see if we can solve that. Let's do the algebra and let's add two to both sides. So we're gonna have cosine squared x is equal to two. Um, and then I'm gonna have cosine x is equal to, I'm gonna do it again to see who's learning. What did I forget just now? Plus or minus, please don't forget your plus or minus. Um, now, I hope everybody is awake and paying careful attention because this is a little detail that comes up once in a while. It'll probably show up on your next uh, quiz or test and I'm gonna hold you accountable for it. Remember way back in unit two, when we learned to graph the function y equals cosine x. Okay, just like super fast. Um, rough sketch, we know that cosine x looks like this. Um, but here's the part I wanna emphasize to you. What was the highest value reached by cosine? And what is the lowest value reached? What's the high and low of cosine? It keeps going up and down forever, but what's the high and the low? It only went up to a high of one and a low of negative one. That was the sort of automatic amplitude if there was no a value in front to make it different than that. Cosine has a max of one and a min of negative one. Um, anybody that has a calculator out does anybody have a kid? I mean, you don't really need it for this lesson, but the square root of two. Um, the square root of two is approximately 1.4. You're not gonna have a calculator on your next test. All that matters is obviously the square root of two is bigger than one because the square root of one is equal to one. So you know the square root of two is gonna be something bigger than one. Um, so plus or minus root two is gonna be higher than positive one and lower than negative one. So this is impossible um, because cosine only goes up to one and only goes down to negative one. Cosine will never equal radical two. It will never equal negative radical two. It doesn't go that high and it doesn't go that low. So this side of the equation has no solution. So watch out for that, you guys. Sometimes you'll get an answer that is just outside of the range of the trig function that you're dealing with. Okay? So just disregard that. It's called extraneous. So that means the only solutions are the two that we got from cotangent x is equal to zero. If I can scroll up. All right, so these ones that I just put in the box, these are the only, the only answers we have. A student just asked me a really good question that I want to emphasize. The question was, Mr. Burton, do we include the no solution as part of our answer? And we don't. Because we do have two solutions, actually, um, it would be contradictory to put two solutions and then right next to it say no solution. So if that happens, just write the two solutions that you have and do not write no solution. Um, I shouldn't even put it in a box. All right, for this example, I'm going to do the algebra first. So I want to get cosine theta by itself. 
So if I add radical 3 and divide by 2, that gives me radical 3 over 2. What is the reference angle for this uh, problem? What's the reference angle? The reference angle is pi over 6 because the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. Notice that cosine theta is positive. So that really tells me uh, what quadrants I'm going to be in. With a reference angle of pi over 6, I'm going to think of this as 6 pi over 6 on the left and 12 pi over 6 on the right. Cosine is positive, so that means we are in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, which means that theta will equal pi over 6 itself in the first quadrant or 11 pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant. So that's your answer to number one. Example two, first we do the algebra that it takes to get sine x by itself. So I'm adding one and dividing by radical two. So that's gonna give me one over radical two. Wonderful children, what is the reference angle for this problem? That's a reference angle of pi over four. Notice that we have sine x which is positive. That tells us what quadrants to look at. All right, since the reference angle is pi over 4, I'm going to think of this on the left as 4 pi over 4, and on the right, I'm going to think of this as 8 pi over 4. Sine is positive above the x-axis. So that means the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. That means x equals in the first quadrant, um, that's the reference angle pi over 4 itself. But in the um, second quadrant, what am I going to call this angle in the second quadrant, guys? 3 pi over 4. So those would be the solutions to this example. Next example, first we do the algebra to get tangent x by itself. Subtract 1 from both sides, so that's tangent x is equal to negative 1. Um, now we ask ourselves what the reference angle is. The reference angle. Ignore the negative sign. The tangent of what is 1? Pi over 4. So that is the reference angle. So the reference angle is pi over 4. Notice that we have tangent x, um, which is negative. Tangent is negative. Think about the quadrants where tangent is negative. As I'm drawing the circle, think about where tangent is negative. Be ready to tell me. Uh, because the reference angle is pi over 4, on the left, I'm going to think of this as 4 pi over 4. And on the right, I'm going to think of it as 8 pi over 4. So tell me, what are the two quadrants where tangent is negative? 2 and 4. So these are the two quadrants where we're going to have the solutions. So how about that second quadrant? What's the solution in the second quadrant? 3 pi over 4. Or what's the solution in the fourth quadrant? 7 pi over 4. So those are the two solutions for number 3. Example 4. First, I will do the algebra that will get cosine squared theta by itself. So I'm adding 1, dividing by 2. So that gives me 1 half. Watch this carefully. I, I sometimes will lose a couple of kids on this step. To get rid of the squared aspect of it, you understand I'm taking the square root of both sides. So I'm going to get cosine theta. I'm taking the square root of the numerator and the denominator sort of separately. What's the square root of 1? 1. So I'm not going to put a radical 1. I'm just going to put a 1. But then in the denominator, the square root of 2, I'm going to put radical 2. 
And what am I going to be very care careful not to forget to do? Don't forget the plus or minus, guys. Whenever you're taking the square root of both sides, the solution will be plus or minus. So 1 over radical 2, that's the square root of 1 half. Now it's time for you to tell me what the reference angle is. Ignore the plus or minus. The cosine of what is 1 over radical 2? Blurt it out. Pi over 4. So the reference angle is pi over 4. Note, cosine theta is plus or minus. That means all quadrants are going to give us solutions. So we're going to have four solutions to this problem. Uh, because of the reference angle of pi over 4, I will think of this on the left as 4 pi over 4. And on the right, I will think of this as 8 pi over 4. We have solutions in all four quadrants. So here we go. Theta equals, in the first quadrant, it is just the reference angle of pi over 4. In the second quadrant, we have the 3 pi over 4. In the third quadrant, that's 5 pi over 4. And then in the fourth quadrant, that would be 7 pi over 4. Four solutions. All right, if you spaced out, please watch very carefully on this one. We have secant, a reciprocal trig function, so there will be one extra step. So first, let's add 4 to both sides. So that will give us secant squared x is equal to 4. Next, let's take the square root of both sides. So that will give us secant x is equal to plus or minus 2. I am less comfortable with secant, and I am more comfortable with predict what I'm going to say next. I'm more comfortable, yes, yeah, secant is the reciprocal of which trig function? Cosine. Okay, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation. So if I take the reciprocal, uh, secant x will become cosine x. And plus or minus 2 will become what? 1 half, plus or minus 1 half. So this is what I'm going to deal with. Cosine x is equal to plus or minus 1 half. What's the reference angle? Cosine, cosine of what is 1 half? Pi over 3. So we know that the reference angle is pi over 3. Notice that cosine theta is positive or negative. That tells us that we will have solutions in all four quadrants. Because the reference angle is pi over 3, I'm going to think of pi as 3 pi over 3. And I will think of 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. So my four solutions, here we go. X equals. Um, see if you guys can tell them to me. In the first quadrant, what do we have? Pi over 3 itself. Oh, gosh. Uh, pi over 3, the reference angle itself. What about the second quadrant? 2 pi over 3. Third quadrant? 4 pi over 3. Or how about the fourth quadrant? 5 pi over 3. So those are your four answers. So tell me what I'm doing wrong right now. I'm noticing that there's a tangent on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by tangent x and just simplify this right down. What's wrong with that? Instead of doing this, you never want to divide by a trig function. Instead, you want to make it equal to 0 and factor. Please, please, please do not divide both sides by tangent. So instead of dividing, I'm going to subtract tangent from both sides of the equation. So then I have 3 tangent cubed x minus tangent x is equal to 0. So instead of dividing by tangent, I factor out the tangent. Think GCF. 
So I'm going to put tangent x in the front like this. Um, if you're brave, can you tell me what's going to be inside the parentheses after this? 3 tangent squared x minus 1. So using the zero product property, I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero. So we're going to have extra solutions. So on the left side, we have tangent x is equal to zero. And then on the right side, we have 3 tangent squared x minus 1 is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and deal with the tangent x equals zero part of it. So we did something similar earlier in the class period. We're trying to find where tangent is equal to zero. I would encourage you to split that up in terms of sine and cosine. So what can I put instead of tangent? Sine over cosine. So we're saying sine x over cosine x is equal to zero. Does anybody remember what I told you at the beginning of the class period? How can you ever have a fraction equal to zero? What's the one situation? Just blurt it out. The numerator has to be equal to zero. That's the only way a fraction will ever equal zero. So when I see a fraction equal zero, I replace it with the numerator is equal to zero. So this is what we're really solving, where sine x is equal to zero. Um, this is going to be a quadrantal angle. So we're not using the chart. We're not talking reference angles. We're just pinpointing where sine x is equal to 0. Remembering that sine is a y value, um, what are the two places on the unit circle where sine is equal to 0? Pi and 2 pi. Let's, we're going to call it 0 and pi just because of the way they limited the um, the range between 0 and 2 pi. We're supposed to include 0, but not quite include the 2 pi. So just call it 0 instead of 2 pi whenever you're in this position. Call, let's call it 0. OK, so that's it. So um, from the left side, we have that x is 0 or pi. Let's see if we can get additional solutions from the right hand side. So the algebra, uh, adding 1 and dividing by 3 gives me tangent squared x is equal to 1 third. Now I'm taking the square root of both sides. Remember, when I take the square root of a fraction, I'm taking the square root of the numerator and denominator sort of separately. But because the square root of 1 is just a 1, I end up with 1 over radical 3. And of course, don't forget your plus or minus. It's time to tell me what the reference angle is for this problem right here. Reference angle. Tangent of what class is 1 over radical 3? What's the reference angle? Pi over 6. All right, the reference angle is pi over 6. Because of the plus or minus, that, puts, that means that all four quadrants are, are fair game. Um, so that's going to be in either of the four quadrants, reference angle of pi over 6. So we're going to have um, x equals pi over 6 itself in the first quadrant. Um, or, oh, I forgot to do the little thing. Because the reference angle is pi over 6, I'm going to think of pi as 6 pi over 6. And I'm going to think of 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. That helps me keep track of the fact that in the second quadrant, I'm going to think of that as 5 pi over 6. And then in the third quadrant, that's 7 pi over 6. And in the fourth quadrant, that's 11 pi over 6. So in the end, we should probably put all of these answers together in one long list. So, um, so bringing these two down to join the others, we will say x is equal to 0 
pi, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. So we have all of these answers. All right, let's do one more. For this last problem, I'm going to take it to another level, and we'll do more problems like this in future lessons. But I want to go ahead and introduce it now. When you have a multiple angle inside of your trig function, this three basically tells us that we will have three sets of solutions. We're going to have three times as many solutions as we would normally have. So it's going to start off the same way as normal. I'm going to get cosine of 3x by itself by subtracting 1 and dividing by radical 2. So that's going to be negative 1 over radical 2. Um, now, it's time to think about what the reference angle is. So let's see, reference angle. So it doesn't really matter that this is a 3x on the inside. You're asking yourself the cosine of what is equal to 1 over radical 2. So class, what's the reference angle? Pi over 4 is still the reference angle. Notice that cosine of 3x is negative. That still tells you what quadrant we're going to be in. Because the reference angle is pi over 4, I'm going to think of this as 4 pi over 4. And on the right, I'm going to think of this as 8 pi over 4. Cosine is negative on the left. So we're talking about the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So right there, that tells us. Now, so here's the first difference. Because we have a 3x on the inside, not just an x, what we're solving for is 3x, not x. So 3x is equal to, what are we going to call this angle in the second quadrant, guys? 3 pi over 4. 3x is equal to 3 pi over 4. 3x is equal to, what's the other one? 5 pi over 4. Now, I told you there would be three sets of solutions. This is giving me one set of solutions so far. I need two more sets. We get the other two sets by adding, we're going to add 2 pi. Because adding 2 pi takes you all the way around the unit circle and back to where you started from. So it should give you additional solutions. Um, but because of the reference angle, I'm going to add 2 pi, but I'm going to think of it as uh, 8 pi over 4 because I need like denominators. So let's take the two solutions that we have and let's add 8 pi over 4 to each of them. So what's 3 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4? So that's 11 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, what's that? That's 13 pi over 4. So that's two sets of solutions started. Um, let's add 8 pi over 4 again. Um, if I add 8 pi over 4 again, that's going to be 19 pi over 4 and um, what? 20, 21 pi over 4. There's one last step. To get x by itself, you have to divide everything by 3. When you divide by 3, the denominators will all become 12s. So this is the final answer, except for one of these could be reduced. This one should be written as pi over 4.